All right, so you're on your fitness journey, right? You feel like you're doing all the right things. You're waking up at four in the morning. You're going on 17 runs a week. You're eating only fruits and vegetables. You're working out like 40 times a day. I'm trying to think of all of the outrageous exaggerations. You get the point. You feel like you're doing all of the right things, but all of a sudden you've hit a plateau in your workout routine. I'm gonna show you some of my favorite tips, tricks, habits, things I love to do when I feel like I've hit a plateau in my fitness journey, in my routine, I don't know what to do, and these are just chef's kisses, foolproof. Okay, we're in the bathroom. You know what that means. Skincare! As much as I want to preach to you about skincare, as much as I want to tell you how important it is, I shall refrain, but rather, I wanna focus on the importance of having a routine. When we're in a rut, when we're in a plateau in our fitness journey, we can get really down on ourselves and neglect a lot of the other areas in our lives. When in actuality, if I'm feeling like there is nothing going right in regards to my fitness journey, it kinda of feels like I have a totally negative attitude towards the rest of my life, even if things are going really, really well. So if I switch that, and if I make myself feel like I'm being productive, I'm having a good morning routine, doing the laundry, doing the dishes, things that seem so simple, if the rest of our life is put together, then we're going to have the energy to dedicate to putting into our fitness routine. Every morning, whether I like it or not, I get up, I get myself out of bed, I do my skincare prep, I turn on a podcast, I turn on music, I do something that's going to get me into a happier mood. So I'm setting my mood for the rest of the day. That's my routine, that simple. It doesn't matter what time it is, it doesn't matter how fast I get it done, it's a daily practice, it's a ritual, I'm obsessed. And I know it feels so silly, but once I do that little thing, once I start my day off on the right foot, even if I woke up in a grouchy mood, even if I woke up not wanting to work out, I'm a lot more likely to feel like today is going to be my day, I'm gonna crush it, I'm gonna have the best day ever, and I'm probably gonna make time for a workout because I'm feeling on top of the world. We can call this one a mini tip, but highly, highly recommend changing out of your leggings. Get out of your sweats, get out of your quarantine sweat set, change your clothes. Put on jeans, put on comfy pants, put on a nice top. Even if it's something that's comfy, but you're still dressing up, your mindset, boom, changed. That laziness, out the door. Okay, if you listen to my podcast, you're probably gonna be like, Taylor, you're a broken record. We've heard this one before, but I'm telling you now, cause I need to nail it home. Repeat it. It needs to be repeated. Oftentimes we start our fitness journeys with the world at our fingertips. And we have such big expectations. We have this entire agenda for what we want to accomplish. We want to drink a gallon of water a day. We want to do a daily workout. We want to drink more juice. We want to, <laughs> we want to eat more vegetables. We want to wake up early. We want to be the perfect human being. And frankly, it just doesn't exist. It's exhausting, it's overwhelming, and it truly leads to fatigue, and more realistically, it will lead to burnout. As much as you want to just completely give your lifestyle a 180 twist, just start with one thing that you want to accomplish. Just one stinking thing. If it's just drinking an extra glass of water every single day, just do that. Stick with that for one week's time. Master that goal, and once you've mastered it, move on to the next you are going to see so much more progress. You're going to feel so much better about yourself if you actually have goals that turn into habits that turn into your subconscious lifestyle. It's kind of like a New Year's resolution. I give myself these heightened expectations. I tell myself I'm going to accomplish 10 different things. I'm gonna be this whole new person, literally overnight with absolutely no conditioning. You're really gonna to have to trust me on this one, but Hang in there. If you feel like you're stuck in a rut and maybe you're working out every single day of the week, you're working out five times a week, six times, whatever, take a rest day. Just take a rest week, take a rest month if you want to. Our bodies thrive off of rest. Not too much rest, of course, but when we're working out, when we're lifting weights, literally our muscles are being teared apart. If we are giving ourselves no rest time between all of our workouts, our body never has time to repair everything that was broken. It never has time to build all of that muscle that you've worked so hard to build. Sometimes I would overload myself and my body would be almost in so much stress that it wouldn't let me release any fat I was trying to lose or let me build any muscle I was trying to build. 
build. It was under so much tension and I was never giving it time to properly repair itself that I wasn't seeing any progress whatsoever because I wasn't giving my body any proper rest days. It is so dependent on what you prefer and how your lifestyle is. For me personally, I like to have about three rest days per week. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's five. <laughs> Giving your body that rest that it deserves, that you've earned is so, so vital to being able to get past your rut, to seeing progress, and probably a lot better progress than you would have seen if you continue to work out seven days in a row, going so hardcore, your body's just like, Holy guacamole, give me a stinking break. This is a hard one to be diligent about, but it has saved me time and time again. I have this great planner, it's from Lamare. You don't really need me to tell you to use a planner. If you wanna use one, you'll use one. But this planner is awesome because it has a habit tracker in it. Let's flip to a good week. Let's show you a good example. This is essentially what we're working with. So when I set a lot of goals for myself, I lose track of them so easily. And I'll tell myself, yeah, I probably drank a gallon of water yesterday, but honestly, if I don't write it down, I won't remember. You can do this on a piece of paper. You don't need a fancy schmancy planner to do it for you. But even a goal that doesn't necessarily have to do with living a healthy lifestyle, like reading, for example, I wanna make sure that I'm actually staying on top of it and not just saying, oh yeah, I'll probably read here and there. But then I actually look at what I've done and I've been a really bad reader for the week. If you can find some way that works for you to track your goals, to track your habits on a daily basis, is something that's mindless. It takes you 15 seconds to complete. It will absolutely hold you accountable. You'll remember the goals that you set and you'll remember the days that you actually stuck to what you said that you were going to do. Also keep in mind that number one golden rule, don't set too many expectations for yourself from the start. Pick one habit, one thing that you can stick with for one week's time. Once you master that, then add on. Not to toot my own horn, but I actually think that's a really, really helpful tip to remember because sometimes we're gonna think that every single day we've gotten up before 7 a.m. or every single day we've eaten vegetables. But if we're not keeping track, how often are we really doing those things consciously, every single day, making a habit of it? And not just lying to ourselves and saying that we did something when we really know we don't. I don't want to touch on this one too much, but it is important to talk about your nutrition. Nutrition is such a tricky thing because obviously I'm not a registered dietitian, although that would be cool. But it is important to at least acknowledge that so much of living a healthy lifestyle or maybe getting out of a physical fitness routine rut versus mental I guess, is paying attention to what you're fueling your body with. Sometimes I just have to be really real with myself. This whole video is just real talk. And I basically just have to come to terms with myself that I'm not eating that well. I haven't been eating many vegetables. I haven't prioritized nutrient dense foods. And that's a huge part of fueling my body, feeling good, making sure that I'm getting enough energy to last me through my workouts to make sure that I'm doing well and living out a healthy lifestyle. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I think a lot of Sometimes I tell myself I'm doing the right thing. I tell myself I'm eating well when really I'm kind of lying to myself, which is just rude to me, from me to me. All right, get ready because this is my favorite tip and the most important tip of all. For months, I was stuck in a rut, I was stuck in my fitness plateau, and I literally did not know how to get out. I felt like I was doing all of the right things, working out so stinking often, and I just wasn't seeing any progress. Then I kinda gave myself a real hard look in the mirror, and I said, Taylor, what are you really doing with your day? You'll go to the gym for 30 minutes at a time. Sure, I'm pushing myself really, really hard. I'm using weights, I'm incorporating different routines, I'm trying new things. But then, the whole rest of the day, I would sit at my desk, or I'd go to the couch, or I'd go to the refrigerator. There was It was just a cycle, a big old triangle of rotation. There are 24 hours in the day, and I'm spending 30 minutes of my entire day moving. I wasn't standing. I wasn't walking. I'm in quarantine for crying out loud. Like it's not like I'm out and about anymore. So all I did, I swear to goodness gracious Molly Mae, is I added more movement in my everyday routine consistently. When you look at your total daily energy expenditure, there are so many different components that break up how we expend our energy throughout the day. And an actual form of exercise is just one small little component of that. There are so many other things that are so 
stinking vital to seeing good progress. And one of the biggest things that you can do for yourself is just adding in that little bit of movement. Hashtag step into 21. It really is that simple. It's taking the stairs more often, parking a few stalls further away from the grocery store. It's walking back and forth in your apartment late at night because you can't leave your house and maybe you have young kids or a dog or you just are stuck in lockdown. It's the other 23 and a half hours of your day. It's that other movement that's going to make such a big, big difference to you and your progress. I promise you. Okay, I'm running out of locations. <laughs> this one is important, so listen up. Make sure that the workout that you're doing is a workout that you love. If you're trying to make something work for you that you just genuinely hate, just stop. Stop the workout now. I don't want that to sound harsh, but I think life is too freaking short to be doing the workouts that we hate. I spent so many years trying to do different workouts that I thought I was supposed to do because that's what I saw online. It's what I saw my friends doing and it just never clicked with me. I never felt happy. I felt annoyed before every single workout. I would procrastinate it all day long until I was working out at 1130 at night because I tried as hard as I could to even forget this workout exists. When I finally started doing workouts that made me happy and I stopped comparing my workout routine to anybody else's, that's when I finally started to find the joy in my workouts and that's when I started to see much better results. Not just physically, for my mental health, that's what working out to me is all about. Your workout doesn't have to feel like a chore. It should feel like something you want to do. And if you're not loving it, try something different. Think about when you were little and you used to play soccer, you played basketball, you played volleyball. All of these things are fantastic workouts, but when we were doing them at the time, we just thought we were having fun. We were at practice with our friends, but we were getting our butts kicked. Probably doing a lot of conditioning too, but you get the point. Nowadays, I think of a workout as this like strict gym regimen with headphones on, beast mode activated, like all this stuff that's so unnecessary. Find a workout that brings you joy, stick to that, and you're going to see success in more ways than one. Aw, please. All right, folks, that's all from me. I hope that this helped you in one small way. I've been there, I'm with you. I know how hard it is and how discouraging it is when you're in a rut, you feel like you're just not seeing any sort of progress, mental or physical. Sorry, that was so cute. But try out some of these tips. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. DM me some of your results. If you need some extra encouragement, I do have a Facebook group for Step Into 21. I will leave it linked in the description box below. Follow me on TikTok, follow me on Instagram, subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out so stinking much. I love you all. You've got this. I'll see you in the next one.